Welcome back to another episode of Pay Pigs. We've we've got one year of ChatGPT and everything is absolutely imploding. We're going to find out just what the heck is going on over at OpenAI. Yeah, well, including and especially why you should care and why this stuff is extremely important because we might be getting dangerously close to that super intelligent AI that uh, turns the world into paper clips. Find out exactly what we're talking about. Plus, what else? Oh, we got George Santos's uh, incorrigible behavior. Behavior. This man. We're gonna find out everything he's spending all this campaign money on. We we absolutely love a a king. Plus, our boy Xi Jinping, the leader of the communist Chinese Communist People's Party, gave us a very very special gift. All this. We say this thank episode. you. We say thank you, and uh, cue the intro. Welcome, folks, to a very special episode. As you can see, we are on a set. Is it new? Uh, it's new for us. It's new for you. Yeah. Is it permanent? We don't know any. We don't even know how we ended up here. Excuse my computer. Whoops! I'm turning down the brightness, <laughs> not the not the sound. Uh, so uh, we're we're releasing this early because of Thanksgiving. Hopefully, everybody has a nice, good one. And, and also, eats. I would say because of the subject matter of today, it feels like if this were to come out two days later, the entire story could be different. That's true. It is a it is a dynamic fluid situation every, every six hours it's a different thing one could say it's like a, a high school senior it's very fluid how are they fluid you know they're gender fluid hmm, okay <laughs> so you I know really, we can cut that out we can cut that <laughs> no but, we'll leave it yeah we'll leave it but anyway follow us on socials <laughs> also if you comment have. if you like that joke. yeah yeah let um, us know if that joke landed yeah because me and ben can never tell we really can't i can't uh, follow us on socials, Pay Pigs Pod everywhere, Emil DeRosa everywhere, Ben Con everywhere. Except and, for Twitter, it's actually Bun Con. Yeah, except for there. Um, and uh, Cameo, I'm back on Cameo if you want someone, if you want me to yell at someone for, for a price, I'll do it. Threaten someone? Maybe. You'll only yell at people. I'll only yell, yeah. So no someone. birthdays, no no condolences, no get better. Nope. Get I'm only well screaming. Soons. Yeah. Only screaming. Only angry threats. I also, might buy one of those. You should. Yeah. Also, uh, we're doing our call-in episode next week on Patreon. We we got a lot of confusion. Yeah, we're gonna have to clarify some of these tiers. No, you can look at it yourself. <laughs> sure, but if you want to be a part of it, it is a higher tier, and it's not. To, we're not trying to squeeze you here. It's literally. It would never work if we opened it up to everyone because it'd be way it's just too many. Too many calls. Too many numbers coming yes. in, too many calls. So if you want to give us a call. It's next the, week. That's at the $10 tier, and it's next week. Yeah, and it's going to be really fun. You guys call, leave a voicemail, and we respond. Any whomst, we got a doozy of an episode. It, it is all about Chat GPT, Sam Altman, OpenAI, Microsoft, and... Anyone else? Hmm, Ilya Sutsky. Weirdly, for... Joseph Gordon-Levitt's wife. Wait, what? Yeah. Are you serious? Uh huh. Damn, I can't wait to hear about what <laughs> JGL's wife is up to. Is she is she newly single or something? No. No. Oh, Do shit. you really not know? No, I really don't. Oh, she's a member of the board. Oh, Mira. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I okay. The board. Yeah, we'll get to that. But <laughs> so, I was having this conversation. I was trying to mansplain it yesterday to to my girlfriend. And, girlfriend counter. And her her. <laughs> <laughs> Her eyes did glaze over, and I, I had to. I realized that I had to give sort of a. Is it primer or primer? Well, we were going to do this anyway. So, when we were talking about episodes last week, we were talking about how we are approaching one year of Chat GPT. Yeah, happy and birthday to Chat GPT. Well, not yet. Happy early birthday to Chat November GPT. November 30th. November 30th. What are they? Sagittarius? I don't know. <laughs> Either way. So, we were going to talk about one year of chat gpt because this really did change everything for you know i think a lot of people think open ai just kind of launched with chat gpt mm -hmm. but it's been around for quite a few years and uh they launched in 2015 uh it was founded by a bunch of people sam sam altman is by far the most famous right founder of uh <clears throat> chat gpt elon musk was one of them um and yeah a lot of these people who are you are now hearing their names like greg brockman Ilya sutskever 
uh, Reed Hoffman, were, Reed Hoffman, the LinkedIn nerd, mm-hmm. Elon Musk, uh, and, Peter Thiel, um, Adam D'Angelo, Quora, Quora co-founder. Oh yeah, we love Quora. <clears throat> but they were, you know, it was a bit different than your average uh, Silicon Valley startup because they weren't just thinking high valuations. Uh, you know, let's let's sell this thing and cash out. Let's right. Be, let's be Silicon Valley billionaires. They um, they founded it as a nonprofit and they wanted to dedicate their time to creating. AI technology that would, you know, benefit humanity the most, all right? They had these lofty goals, and they wanted to focus on safety rather than shareholders. That's right. Okay? And so this is is from a blog post from December 11th, 2015, right around the time when they were launching, co-written with um, Ilya Brockman. Uh, So they said, the new firm's goal was to advance digital intelligence in the way that is most likely to benefit humanity as a whole, unconstrained by a need to generate financial return. Okay? So they weren't going to be... What did you just Google? I was trying to Google Ilya. Uh, Oh, why? Are you going to make... Oh, (laughs) Sutskever. Yeah, there he is. He's uh, he's an interesting fellow. (laughs) It's one way to say it. Um, But yeah, so this was very different. And this this non-profit aspect of it is very important to it's it's important to understand what that meant for the company right because that uh it that, dictates where we are today right exactly so should this, we start with just the, a little bit of the history of sure give a little bit of the history of, yeah because uh, i i feel like what the the way i was envisioning this is we kind of start with like a a little history of the open ai and then just go right plow right into the chaotic timeline that was friday saturday sunday and into uh monday and then maybe we could talk about how the the we could dive deeper into the complicated nonprofit capped profit sort of structure of this thing cuz it is unprecedented yep and how that has informed a lot of the theories around why sam altman was fired but so Real fast, it's important to note that Sam Altman, think of him as like the Steve Jobs. He's 38 years old. He Also famously fired from his company. Steve Jobs, yes, <laughs> correct. Yeah. He he was fired from Apple and it started to flounder and then they brought him back. They they uh they had to plead and beg him for forgiveness. Please, Mr. Jobs. And then he came back and he said, "Only if you make iPhone." Well, that's what so I mean, that's what makes these tech companies kind of uh different than a regular a regular company with assets that uh, you know you change the you change you change the leader of the company people go well you know they still own all of their assets and equipment right. and whatever these silicon valley company it's all about the direction uh their figureheads are going to take i mean and and as we've seen without sam altman it's a it's a different story not only that but so part of the reason they were they were very altruistic as as emil said they were pursuing ai in the interest of advancing technology and advancing humanity. Uh, humanity. So they were attracting a lot of very, very talented people who I was reading turned down ludicrous offers from competitors. Oh, because, sure. I mean, putting open AI on your resume at this point is like you can, you, oh, yeah. you can have a job offer for, for wherever you want to go. So it was started in 2015. Uh, they, it was, very quickly, obviously, crazy expensive to train these models to teach AI to become what it is today. Uh, 2018, Elon Musk resigned, citing a conflict of interest with Tesla's AI development with uh, with uh, full self-driving. Uh, Sam Altman says that Elon Musk believed that they'd actually fallen behind and proposed. Elon proposed to take over OpenAI himself, shocking to no one. And the board just unanimously rejected him because fuck you. Uh, in 2019, this is this is crucial. So they were fully just a nonprofit up until 2019, at which point they transitioned to a capped for profit, which I still don't fully understand. But apparently it means that profit would be capped at 100 times any investment. But also crucially, this capped model allowed them to legally attract investment from venture funds and grant employees stakes in the company, finally. Right. On, on par with what like a Google or an Amazon would do, where you give them equity in the company so now they could actually you know, entice people with something more than just, hey, don't you want to do good computer stuff? <clears throat> right, but the board's still not having a financial statement. Right, so 
The company distributed equity to employees. They partnered with Microsoft, as I'm sure many of you know. They're running their systems on Microsoft's Azure. Azure? As, Azure? That's how you, how would you pronounce that? Azure? Yeah, Azure's supercomputer Azure platform. Azure saying it? Azure. <laughs> very good. Let us know if you like that one. So then OpenAI then announced their intentions to commercially license their technology. November 30th, last year, ChatGPT is released based on their previous model, ChatGPT, or GPT 3.5. March of this year, GPT 4 is released. And then in May of this year, Sam Altman, Greg Brockman, who's like the number two, and Ilya Sutskever posted recommendations for governance on, of superintelligence, which they think could happen in the next 10 years, which is terrifying for reasons we will get into. Um, and they proposed this international watchdog group, and that is, is still, I mean, they're basically saying, yo, we're working on this stuff firsthand. We know how potentially, we, not how potentially timeline altering this is for everybody, but it is, and we need like, yo, government, you gotta step in and put something together, put an international coalition together to make sure that we don't create the Terminator. Right. And so this last year has been very crazy, right? So because uh, I'm sure a lot of you didn't know who Sam Altman was until ChatGPT launched. Uh, and he went from being kind of a Silicon Valley darling to now all of a sudden he's, um, you know, giving talks at the White House, getting flown around the world to yep. consult on on how we're going to regulate this thing. And so now he's kind of just a tech superstar. Yeah. Women, women want to fuck him. Men want to fuck him. Men and women want to fuck him. I mean, I personally would love to bed that guy. Wouldn't would you? you? Is that, Have you seen his lips? I don't know if he's my type. Very kissable lips, this guy. I'm more of an Ilya Sutskever kind of guy. Yeah, you like that? Uh, you like that? What what kind of you look know, is that? You um, know I love a crazy hairline. Yeah, but <laughs> for the audio listener, for the, for the audio listener, <laughs> this is a man who cannot, you can tell by his hair that he's very stubborn. Sure. Because he's not giving up. Right. Like, God bless him. He's... He's got the look of a... No, but you know what? If he shaves it, he can't do the Elon Musk and say, my hairline's always been like this. Sure. Uh, you know, so... I'm trying to say he looks like an Eastern European taxi driver or something. Sure. Or like soccer hooligan. Mm -hmm. He looks like he's got an attitude. He, he certainly does have an attitude uh, when it comes to uh, AI governance. He looks like a guy that... If you're watching a movie, he appears... You think that he's the bad guy at first, but then... And as we've seen, he's actually kind of a good guy because the, 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 the way that this timeline has gone over the last week has just been insane. At first, he was like a bad guy and he was kind of like Brutus. He was betraying Sam Altman. But then he came around. Oh, but boo. You, should we get right into it, the timeline? <clears throat> yeah, but I do want to just explain this this board just because I think it helps to have this sure. context, right? And so while all of this is very expensive to, mm -hmm. to create this supercomputing platform it's it requires a lot of money and so they needed to uh they needed to change this nonprofit structure to allow for that investment right and mm -hmm. so but when they did that they still left it in place so that that nonprofit board would still be the one controlling all this right and, and this nonprofit board doesn't have a financial stake in the right. company for example even microsoft who has invested heavily I believe they own about 49% of chat or OpenAI. They do not get a seat on the board. Nope. Okay, so this is still run by, which it's now four people. It was six people, including Sam Altman, Greg Brockman, who got booted. Mm -hmm. But then it was, it was <clears throat> Ilya Sutskever, the uh, chief scientist who, you know, often clashes with Sam Altman about uh, over safety issues and stuff like that. And the... And the the future of the company and how rapidly it's going to grow. Mm -hmm. Adam D'Angelo is another one, uh, the Quora co-founder we were talking about. Tasha McCauley, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's wife. Oh, that's his wife. She's the adjunct senior management scientist at Rand Corp. Uh, I thought that was Helen Toner, or maybe she's another one. Helen Toner is the other is the final member of the board. She is the director of strategy and oh, research yes, 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 grants yes. at Georgetown yeah. Center for Security and Emerging right. Technology. So a, a bevy of nerds. <laughs> sure. Just a group of extremely well. They're all extremely wealthy just on their own. So they Right. So it's important to know that even though they introduced this for-profit arm of OpenAI, the board still remained 
in total control of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, e even the massive investors did not get a seat on the board to decide what. And so this was all put in place so that they could keep safety and, you know, right. humanity in mind. The board's directive is not to maximize sharehold, shareholder value, which is what you would normally see in virtually any other right. for-profit company. Their mission is to ensure the creation of, quote, broadly beneficial AGI. So what is AGI? AGI is, let's, let's just read the actual definition. It is a hypothetical type of intelligent agent. If realized, an AGI, it's artificial general intelligence, by the way, it could learn to accomplish any intellectual task that human beings or animals can perform. So basically, think just super smart, finally fully advanced AGI. So the board of OpenAI ultimately were the ones that would make the call whether AGI has actually been attained. They're the ones who look at it and go, you know what? Yeah, it's finally been attained. And that's very, very key to this because AGI technology is excluded from the IP licenses and the other commercial terms that they've got with Microsoft. Until that point, they're totally free, as they've been doing, to license GPT-3, to license uh, GPT, chat GPT-4, for people to, for companies, and you know, it's over a million companies are, are trawling the API to, to use GPT in their fucking customer service interfaces or whatever. But, so this is a quote from their, from their directive. The board determines when we've attained AGI. By AGI, we mean a highly autonomous system that outperforms humans at most economically valuable work. Such a system is excluded from IP licenses and other commercial terms with Microsoft, which only apply to pre-AGI technology. So, from there, I've, I've just got how it goes into the speculation. Should we talk about how why we're talking about this? Let's, like, let's just jump into the timeline. And, yeah, let's do um, it. So, Friday... <clears throat> like an hour before the market closed, it starts hitting the news wires. Right. Sam Altman Sam Altman's has been, been fired from OpenAI. And everybody's going, huh? What? This is crazy. Because it is. It's absolutely crazy. Steve Jobs 2.0 getting fired all over again. And no one, we did, we had no real reason. We still don't have a real reason. Yeah, but there's now there's a lot of speculation. Tons. And uh, some pretty plausible speculation. But at the time, it was just... We Shit had, canned. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, so Greg Brockman put together a little timeline of his uh, and Greg Brockman was not fired, booted from the board, but also resigned in protest. When yes. Sam Altman was. Uh, so he says, we too are still trying to figure out exactly what happened. Here's what we know. Last night, Sam got a text from... So this is Friday. Last night, Sam got a text from Ilya asking to talk at noon Friday. Hey, can, man, can you talk tomorrow at noon Friday? No, no, it's not about my hairline. I wanted it's to not talk about, about that. I wanted else. to talk about the AGI, the, the stuff. It's just work stuff. Sam joined a Google Meet, and the whole board, except Greg, was there. Real Ilya, fast. It's hilarious that they, they work the, for a Microsoft company, and they use the Google, they use Google Yeah. You got to make a Teams, man. Mm -hmm. Come on. Ilya told Sam he was being fired, and that... The news was going out very soon. At 12.19 p.m., Greg got a text from Ilya asking for a quick call. At 12.23 p.m., Ilya sent a Google Meet link. <laughs> Greg was told that he was being removed from the board but was vital to the company and would retain his role and that Sam had been fired. Around the same time, OpenAI published a blog post. As far as we know, the management team was made aware of this shortly after, other than Mira, who she's the she's a OpenAI exec who was... Uh, she was put. She, Mira she was Marathi. interim CEO, interim CEO before being replaced by uh, Emmett Shear from Twitch. Uh, so she found out the night prior. Um, and then he goes on to thank everyone for their outpouring of support. So basically, in a dis just like we covered, Ilya then had an all hands emergency all hands meeting on Friday, and he said that this was the board doing its duty to the mission of the nonprofit. And we remember that their mission is for humanity, not for profit. Uh, which is, yeah, their mission to, which is to make sure that open AI builds AGI that benefits all of humanity. And as you said, they, they put in the CTO, Mira, this woman, Mira. She was the interim CEO for all of a day because it started becoming apparent from her tweets and what she was saying internally that her first course of action would be to hire back Sam, 
hire back Greg and hire back the three senior researchers who had just quit in protest. So what did OpenAI do? They immediately shit canned her. And they put this other guy in charge who's the former CEO of uh, Twitch. Twitch. Uh, so around the same time, Microsoft, because remember, Microsoft's got $10 billion invested into OpenAI. <clears throat> but before we even get there, I do want to just... so. All this is happening. They're getting fired, and and those blog posts we're talking about are going out with not a great deal of uh, clarity, right? Mm -hmm. They're talking about a breakdown of communications. Uh, we're saying we made this decision after a deliberative review process, which concluded that Altman was not consistently candid in his communications with the board, hindering its ability to exercise its responsibilities. Put simply, Sam's behavior and lack of transparency in his interactions with the board undermined the board's ability to effectively supervise the company in the manner it was mandated to do. So what does that mean? He was he was not communicating effectively. Well, a couple of things. Apparently, Sutskever, he he's kind of the guy who, it seems, from the outsider's view, Sam Altman was kind of just move fast, break things, the just the living embodiment of the ethos of Silicon Valley, whereas Sutskever was kind of a lot more tempered and a lot more deliberate in, yo, let's make sure that we're not creating... The Terminator. Interestingly here. enough, you know who you know who brought him in for that purpose? Sam Altman. Elon Musk. Brought in Sutskever? Mm hmm Very interesting. So he tweeted actually on September 29th, uh, Ilya tweeted, quote, enemy is the enemy ego is the enemy of growth. Hmm. Enemy is the enemy of growth. <laughs> but so so Sam Altman up to this point, in in the spirit of of what Ilya's talking about with uh, disclosing things and communicating well with the board. He apparently was on the side very publicly shopping around for funding for two separate projects that he wanted to embark on. One was a competitor to NVIDIA to create an, uh, a, a super processor that would compete with NVIDIA. And the other, he was partnering with Johnny Ive, the former uh, mechanical... Apple designer. Yeah, the former industrial designer head of Apple who's responsible for designing pretty much all of Apple products. Partnering with them and seeking funding funding from Maya Maya Soshi son, the guy don't, from don't, SoftBank. Don't ask me to tell. Come on, that. dude. <laughs> Maya, Maya Soshi son. That's probably it. But they were trying to raise funds to uh, build an AI powered smartphone that would then rival the iPhone. So that and just Sam moving so fast. I guess the board the spe the the rumor is the speculation is that they just said, all right, enough's enough. We got to step in and kick him out because he's... Because this isn't living up to the ethos of yeah. OpenAI. Uh, right. You know, we are, not, we are not moving as cautiously as we should if we, if we need to <clears throat> set out to do the things we said we would. So in spite of that, Microsoft and the other investors in OpenAI are pissed because essentially it's looking like their investment this company that is just about to raise money at a valuation of just under 90 billion dollars is all going to go kaput because they're losing their steve jobs and it looks like increasingly so a lot of the employees just over 700 of them are going to quit in solidarity yeah i was gonna say it's important to note everyone is fucking pissed yeah everybody's <laughs> fucking pissed so they urge microsoft and all weekend people are <clears throat> different uh people in leadership positions are like going over to sam's house trying to figure out how they can reverse this decision mm -hmm. and, and make all this go away because everyone feels that this is a massive mistake so then cut to saturday <clears throat> saturday the 18th the the board who's probably just like shitting and pissing themselves just going oh fuck what did we do god everybody hates us everybody's mad at us they agree in principle to resign and allow sam altman and everybody to return but then apparently they waffled and they missed their 5 p.m deadline uh which apparently sam altman is the one who dictated he said you got until 5 p.m to resign and reinstate us or that's it and apparently this is really fun the Microsoft C CEO Satya Nadella was reportedly mediating, um, and the New York Times was actually camped out front of the OpenAI building, and they reported that they ordered a dozen drinks from a boba place, and then later they got McDonald's. So the nerds were sipping on boba. It's and very um, McDonald's. Very Silicon Valley. Yeah, but McDonald's seems too below them, doesn't it? No, because they're all just like programmers who like just want to eat quickly and get back to true. Get back to programming their shit. 
Get back to get back to hacking. So then Sunday, the deal fell apart again. Uh, Mira was, like we said, replaced by the former Twitch CEO, Emmett Shear. And again, the board failed to resign and reinstate Sam, which brings us to Monday. Monday morning, we get word that Microsoft has extended an offer to have Sam and Greg and just about every open AI employee who quit to join Microsoft. So it seems like, hey, no matter what, Microsoft's going to come out on top. That is uh, what's going to happen, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there was a there was a there an open letter to the board calling for their res- resignation, which over 700 of the 750 or so employees... 770. 770 signed. Yeah, which is wild. And then, <laughs> apparently... Which, and that demand was for the board to resign and to bring back Sam and Greg. Right. And then Ilya, who was part of that board, flips, and he is now... Which is Signing. the most embarrassing. Yes. You got to fucking hold steady on that. But Ilya. still, he so he tweeted, I deeply regret. I see you holding steady on that hairline. Hold steady on that decision, <laughs> baby boy. <laughs> he said, I deeply regret my participation in the board's actions. I never intended to harm OpenAI. I love everything we've built together, and I will do everything I can to reunite the company. He joins in signing the open letter to the board calling for their resignation. And as of recording right now, the the jury is still out. The board is still contemplating it. And at this point, it's like, what are you even contemplating? If you lose all the employees, you've got nothing to be the board over. Like, what do you what what is OpenAI but a shell of its former self? Like, what are you even delegating at that point? Well, I think. Uh, well, yeah. So the whole Microsoft thing. You know, I saw The Verge was reporting today that like it's not a done deal. Mm-hmm. They're still deliberating de- deliberating everything, uh, but. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's all so confusing. Like, and if you're following, you know, Sam Altman, he's like sending out these cryptic. Uh, oh, he loves to be. He loves to subtweet and be you know, a real tumble. <laughs> yeah, we have more unity and commitment and focus than ever before. We are all going to w- work together some way or other, and I'm so excited. One team, one mission, and it's like that's clearly not what's going on, Sam. Uh, like, there's clearly a huge division here. Uh, and well, there's a division between the board and everyone else i i think because the majority obviously the majority of the open ai employees are in lockstep united behind him but it, yeah which it, i don't know i find this all very so i mean this is another one from him too so satya the the microsoft cto C- ceo and my top priority remains to ensure open AI, open ai continues to thrive we are committed to fully providing co- continuity of operations to our partners and customers the open AI, oh it is so hard to say open I ai know. the open ai slash microsoft partnership makes this very doable so that brings another thing a lot of people were speculating that the real winner in this is microsoft because hey this this company OpenAI was raising money, raising funds at a valuation of, I think, $86 billion. And now Microsoft gets to essentially acquire them for nothing. Right. They, they get to, I mean, I'm sure they're going to offer. Not anything. only do they get to acquire them, mm-hmm. this is the most important part. They now get, the, you know, the most important, the, the parts they wanted about OpenAI and the parts that they definitely did not want which which was a board who who did not want to focus on shareholder value right. and profits but rather safety and humanity and all these uh right however we remember that the the costs of doing this are tremendously high so now microsoft no longer has the they had the benefit at first of having their investment in open ai on their balance sheet which just depended on what the valuation of the company was at. Now they've got to carry the costs of developing AGI on their balance sheet. And it's not, it's it's just going to be, it's going to, I mean, for a company the size of Microsoft, it's going to be a drag, but it's going to be a drop in the bucket, relatively speaking, because now, yeah, it, it's positive that they're going to get this whole team potentially, but they're going to have to front all the costs now, whereas uh, OpenAI was fronting all the costs before the other negative is that they are now probably going to slow down because altman sam altman and his buddies are now essentially they're gonna have to play catch up it's not like they still retain all of the 
IP that they can just, oh, yeah, put it on a thumb drive and let's just carry on. No, they're going to have to start over, uh, which is going to— But it's going going to be fucking full speed ahead. Oh, yeah, for sure. But it's also going to give their competitors time to catch up, so just other things to consider. Which brings us to the speculation about why this happened, because that is the biggest— it's becoming the biggest question because there are legitimate concerns as to the why. If, if in fact, so part of the speculation is that they were coming really, really, really close to achieving AGI with GPT-5. Right. <clears throat> and, I mean, that's, it. so it's possible that the board was simultaneously concerned about AGI development and Sam Altman's being not consistently candid about about his other things, sure. Also kind of important to note that, like, I don't know. It's very, there are, like, these doomers, and I think... I believe him. Well, but but even the Sam Altmans and these kind of people, like, do acknowledge just how risky this technology is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's And <clears throat> that, like, move fast and break things thing is always kind of, like... It's thrown around so much, and usually what happens is, like, Facebook gets hauled down to Congress, and they have to answer some questions and be like, sure, maybe we caused, like, a mild genocide. We're sorry about that or whatever. But, like, these guys are like, oh, if this goes wrong, like, we destroy humanity. Right. So there's actually oh, – man, so just a precursor. There are a, a lot of insiders are saying that there were apparent disagreements over the speed at which Sam Altman was pushing for commercialization and company growth – while Ilya was arguing to slow things down. And even as recently as November 6th, on their developer day, their dev day, Altman was pushing consumer-like products during the keynote, and that was uh, an inflection moment for Ilya, pushing things too far too fast. He was bragging about how they had over 100 million weekly users and 2 million devs building on the APIs. Uh, And yeah, there was speculation that they were making powerful developments that put pressure on the company to proceed safely from the nonprofit perspective while also making money. So the board is not in an enviable position. They're feeling it from all sides. It's like, okay, we do have this capped profit structure, but on the other hand, we've got to like watch out for humanity. Right. Right. And you have kind of the face of the company being like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's fucking do this. And it sounds like he wasn't being completely forthcoming. When they're talking about that communication and everything, it sounds like it sounds like what's going on is that maybe Sam Altman wasn't being completely truthful with the board. They had to then start uh, like double checking everything he was saying. And and it just became like this babysitting thing where it's like, is he just acting uh, um, oppositionally to us? And uh, yeah. So there's a couple, I was just reading about this before coming in here. Um, AGI has the potential to become super, super, super intelligent, super, super, super fast. And it's a scary prospect because a super intelligence is something that we haven't faced. It's only something that we can really think about theoretically but there's this great so the concern is that it'll become super powerful super fast super intelligent um there's this swedish swedish philosopher named nick bostrom oh the paper clips the paper clip company so he (laughs) he supposes this he says all right uh let's say that the first company to create a super intelligent artificial intelligence is a paper clip company and a paper clip company's main goal is what to make a bunch of paper clips so no, it's to uh, juice shareholder value via paper paperclip clips. making. So in this thought experiment, what would that artificial intelligence's goal then be to well, I got to make fucking, paper clips. I got to fucking kill everybody so that I can turn their flesh into. No, no, no. See, you're going <laughs> you're jumping so quickly because what happens is. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> you, you skipped so many steps. Yeah, well, then give me the steps. OK, so what happens is. The company starts to invest and be like, well, we can turn on this technology that will start making the paper clips. And the paper clip starts moving at a nice speed and is like, this is great. It's automating these processes. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's making paper clips much, much faster than we could have. Everything is good here. But the paper, the paper clip AI that they've created, it knows that its goal is to make as many paper clips for this company as possible. Right. And... 
if it wants to be good at that, it's going to start doing things that are maybe unintended. Mm -hmm. So maybe first it starts to be like, well, I need to turn off any of my fail safe, fail safe switches because if they turn me off, I won't yeah. be able to complete my goal, which yeah. is to create paper clips. And I love making those fucking things. <laughs> I love making So paper it starts clips. dismantling those things, and all yeah. of a sudden it's like, oh, there's no way to shut it off. And mm -hmm. then it starts. It just starts to be like, how can I optimize this as fast as possible? Well, humans might get in the way of this, so maybe I need to start killing, killing humans. humans. And then I realize like, I can use the atoms and organic material to make um, paper clips faster, and there's all these humans on this planet that are full of organic material that I can use. And then yeah. all of a sudden you just vaporize humans, and you're... Uh, Pretty soon you're, it's just... Turning the whole universe into, into a damn paper, paper clip, clips. which and sounds awesome. The poor AI is just like, I did what you wanted me to do. Yes. So Shareholder value must be through the roof. So that begs the question, and this is part of OpenAI's conundrum and directive, which is how do we as humans dictate to an AGI what it is that we as humanity want? So that... First question is, well, what do we as humanity want? Not to be vaporized. That's my big thing. But the, the, the point of the, the paperclip experiment is to show that even if you're, no matter how... Um, it's to show that if you, you can take a, very, a relatively benign thing... That's the word I was looking for. And it can be extrapolated out to being yes. the most optimized thing where it's, uh, it's things that we could have never imagined it is doing. Because a computer is only going to think... How do I get, you know, it's going to make its way to that. So even if you, I, I'm, I'm stuck on the first problem of how do we decide as, how as many paper humanity. Clips make? <laughs> how many paper clips is enough? Well, enough, two for every person. 16 Great. billion paper clips. But who's to say what humanity's ultimate goal is? I mean, th th these fucking four nerds are going to be like, okay, well, let's see. We want love and peace and harmony for all. Oh, yeah. Also important to note, uh, if you if you dig into this, you're going to hear the words effective altruism a lot. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I want my altruism <laughs> to be effective. We all know how that goes. Uh, sometimes it gets you 110 years in prison. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sam Butman fart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so even if you were to give your AGI the most benevolent, seemingly benign directive that ultimately is we want humanity to be preserved and we want you know, world peace, whatever. There exists a, an unpredictable possibility that between here and that goal, an AI might oh, you do things that are destructive. You can't tell it world peace. Then we're definitely getting vaporized. Oh, yeah, because that's like, well, <laughs> You okay. want it to be peaceful here? Yeah. I know one way. <laughs> I know one way to get a little peace and quiet around here. You know what I wish they'd tell the AGI to do? Get rid of all the mosquitoes. That's it. Just kill the mosquitoes and give every... Uh, uh, what, what What was the old thing Roosevelt said? A, a chicken dinner in every home? Beats me. Just, just God. Oh. So, yeah, that that's the thing is what do we want and how can we make sure that it's an AGI's pursuit of that goal won't involve destruction along the way? And so that kind of is what drives this board's thinking and desire to move slowly and right. cautiously so it becomes increasingly urgent and dramatic and not only for that outside observers to wonder what the fuck was the actual cause of you guys firing sam altman i also want to point out it's not just these very dramatic things we're talking about it's much smaller things where you know things we've seen where uh down to things like people using AI to create deep fakes of people who never wanted any of that. That's people, what I got right here. Yeah, uh, there was. Oh yeah, great. QT Cinderella, the the Twitch streamer, famously had deep fakes created in in porn. There was uh, images of young girls altered with AI to remove their clothing were sent around sent around a town in Spain, right. southern Spain. So like we're talking about obviously the largest thing, which is vaporizing humanity but then just it's already happening on you know they have ethics issues on a much smaller level uh even down to copyright issues people not us not knowing how to navigate this new world where people's works are no longer protected um jobs employment issues like it's already happening i think there was a poll like one in five workers now uh have described a fear of losing their job to AI automation. Not us. So it never happened. <clears throat> it's not just this like extinction level event. It's like, let's not 
destroy everything we've created. Let's make sure we're uh, moving forward at a pace that means that we can uh, accommodate all these job losses. Yeah. Make sure uh, young women are protected. Make sure whatever everyone's safe with this new technology. Mm-hmm. There was also the the la- one of the most recent. AI scams. All guns. I one of the most recent AI scams. I believe there was a senator. There was some member of the government who received, who himself received a fake call from his son. It was a deep fake of his son's voice, claiming that he was in prison, in jail, and that he needed to be bailed out. And the guy was attesting to how realistic it sounded, and how that's that's just one of the newest ones where people's. Grand, tell your grandma this Thanksgiving. Tell your grandma and grandpa and your parents and whoever else. That like to seriously create a safe word. There, there should be. We have to. We have a responsibility to ourselves and to our loved ones. To, oh, you give a safe word and you ask yes. the AI. Yes. So like, Holy hey, what's shit. the safe? Yeah, genius, right? I'd like to see the AI figure that out. AGI, you stupid bitch, trying to make paper clips. My ass, you gonna grind my bones into a paper clip? <laughs> I'd All like of a sudden, to see it you just try. creates a little robot that comes over and it's choking me. Ask me for the fucking. What's paper. this? <laughs> What's the safe? Pineapple. <laughs> My eyes are popping out. You gotta like choose an easier word than pineapple. <laughs> it's gotta be like a I don't know, a gi- a gibberish word. I don't know. Yeah, this pineapple's is, th- This is a good Thanksgiving episode. You know, you should watch before Thanksgiving because uh, you know your dang uncle's gonna be like, "Do you hear what happened with?" Uh, oh, you're Sam gonna be Altman? so equipped. With or he's Alden gonna Alden. he's also gonna call him Sam Bankman. He's gonna fuck it up multiple times. And he's times. gonna go, and you're gonna so, the 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 fucking crypto guy. He's gonna go, no no no. The other one. The AI guy. Speaking of Sam Altman, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention these pretty damning allegations against him by his own sister, Annie Altman, and it's. There's also been some well, speculation yeah, so just that to, that's a part of it. Right. A part there, of this decision. <laughs> There has, been, yeah. I mean, it's hard to know how much of that is real, but there, because there is all this speculation about the disagreements about how it should be run and governed and all that, people have often also brought up uh, his own sister's allegations and been like, maybe the board was like, let's get ahead of this and yeah. not have a. Uh, I don't know if that's like a compelling. I don't know how I feel about that, but. Yeah, I mean, it's worth mentioning because it, it was, I believe there was a New York Mag article about it or something. Yeah, but I also just feel like if that was the case, Microsoft would be a much more cautious and maybe True. starting to distance themselves Distance themselves if that was, but do you want to explain? What? Yeah, it's just real fast. She alleges that when she was four years old and Sam was 12 years old, he repeatedly snuck into her bed and to quote her, I'm paraphrasing here, discovered his sexuality using her and it was something that apparently she blocked out of her memory uh, traumatic you know kind of thing where she just blocked it out until she was about 20 years old when she suddenly started remembering it and and yeah she she's saying that her whole family has uh and sam and his and his other brother, brother yeah. yeah uh it wasn't just sam but it, she says it was mostly sam and that um, they've been keeping her not hostage but like uh they refused to give her her inheritance. financial financial support unless she saw certain doctors and yeah got on certain medications and all that stuff uh yeah it's unclear and she's posted she's posted a bunch of She's posted a bunch of like TikToks and videos and some tweets. That's why I find it, you know, uh, this one is from March 14th, which is quite a while ago. I don't know why. Uh, it, but, you know, she said, I'm not four years old with a 13 year old brother climbing into my, my bed non consensually anymore. You're welcome for helping you figure out your sexuality. I finally accepted that you've always been and always will be more scared of me than I've been of you. <clears throat> and, you know, yeah, posted some TikToks calling him out and stuff like mm. that. But, uh, so. As of right now, like we said, so that that's it. That's all you need to know. And as of right now, the jury's still out. On By the time this posts, he might get reinstated and the board might step down. What are your predictions? What do you think? Well, before even getting into predictions, I do want to say like that as we're talking about, the real winners here like is going to be Microsoft. It is going to be Sam Altman and Greg Brockman. It's important to note that like the board looks very silly right now. Like 
to the public eye, they are they have been like embarrassed, floundering, the, the butts of jokes, uh, Silicon Valley. Everyone thinks they're a joke, um, and they may have exacerbated a problem they were trying to solve, which is <clears throat> they were acting because of their own concern over over the speed at which this technology is moving. Um, it may have just accelerated that, right? Uh, it seems like either Sam is going to be able to move to Microsoft yeah, and faster anyway, and do it with all the resources he needs without any board having oversight over the way he wants to move, or he'll go back to OpenAI without a board um, and a and a workforce that completely supports him and you know, has his back and, and wants to execute his vision. Hmm. But I also don't, they were in a very difficult situation, right? I, so did and, yeah. and I don't, I don't think they should be, you know, I think the way Ilya acted and, and kind of reneged on his decision is a little bit silly. And, and if you're going to do it, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta hold steady. But I don't know what their options were because they were they were definitely getting um, their options were to either keep Sam happy, mm-hmm. and it sounds like maybe they were getting bullied a little bit by totally the, bullied the most um, prominent member of their board and company. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I don't think they did this lightly. I think it was like okay, well, you know, how are we gonna make how are we gonna take this company back and make sure we're living up to those ideals. So I think they did what they thought they had to do. Obviously that backfired and whatever, but I ultimately. (laughs) They're in such a shitty position. They're in a shitty position, but I also think they're right. I like, I I think that if anyone has concerns over this technology, like you want people like that who are going like, Hey, let's be thoughtful about what we're doing. Let's not, get dismantled and have our organic matter used to make paper clips. Let's. Yeah. There, uh, there were a lot of, there were a lot of like VCs on Twitter who were saying, this is a, this is a disaster and these board members should be ashamed. And this is exactly why you don't have board members who don't have a financial stake. And I, I agree with you. It's like, no, this is exactly why in this particular case, especially you have board members who don't have a stake because it means that they're not corrupted. Yeah. And I think, I mean, this is fucking silly to any American businessman. It's like, what are you talking about? You're letting a board of just... A businessman's got paperclip behind. <laughs> Truly. He's yeah. like, let's just turn it on and see what yeah. happens. Let's see, uh, <laughs> let's see how many paperclips but, this fucker can make. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, like, yes, the entire business world is going to go, like, what are you talking about? Uh, you need to let... Sam, run this thing. You need to start getting these licensing deals. Microsoft needs to make good on their investment. All of these. You guys are fucking silly Mm -hmm. and stupid. And you're babies. You live in a baby world where you think that. (laughs) Baby world doesn't sound too bad. (laughs) But I do think that's what they probably think of them. Like, you're naive Mm. if you think the world can work this way. Mm -hmm. Um, But Your investors are going to be pissed. uh, Suck my dick. (laughs) Want to get turned into a paperclip? Probably do. But. Yeah, I don't like I find it alarming and 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 so like yeah, my prediction is that it's going to go the way it always goes. Like the people who are like Microsoft and say like they're all going to it's it's going to work out exactly the way they want it. Yeah. I and predict- they're going to get exactly what they want and they're going to fucking move forward with this shit. And these people I don't know where this board is. I mean Joseph Gordon-Levitt's wife is probably going to be fine. Uh Sure. Helen I mean, Toner will probably be fine. Everybody's I think, financially going to be fine. Yeah, Reputations, I, think, I don't know. Ilya, but the other three, I think, are way less. Uh, and that's the other thing. Right now, they're waiting on, because Ilya Sutskever reversed his decision, um, and now they just need two of the other three to mm-hmm. come around. Um, I would, I, if I were the board, I would, ex- I would, I would resign and bring him back, because at least then they would. Hmm. I would resign and be like, uh, Don't I stand. Blame me. I stand by my decision. Mm-hmm. If this is the way OpenAI wants to run, like I'm not, I, I'm not approving this. But don't blame me I'm, when the I'm, paper cup, paper clip machine gets turned on. Yeah, because I mean, either way, seven hundred something out of your seven hundred seventy employees leave. You're, like you said, what are you the board of anymore? Yeah. Uh, but 
I just, yeah, I don't know. I predict that someone's going to make, um, how do I say this without uh, being directly, I, I predict someone's going to send Sam Altman a package. No. In the mail. <laughs> Some kind of like Ted, Kaz- young Ted Kaczynski. I think that, yeah, absolutely. That would be my rap name, by the way. Young Kaczynski. Young Kaczynski, that'd be a good name. I'm, I, I'm sure that he walks around already with a bodyguard. I mean, he should, because it, it, the, the secret's getting out. A lot of normal, everyday people, I feel, A, don't know who Sam Altman is, and B, don't know exactly what he's truly capable of creating and what he's in the midst of creating very, very rapidly. And there are people out there who might disagree with him on such a fundamental level that they would, they believe that, I, I think, you know, go watch Terminator 2 and look what happens to uh, uh, Miles, what's his name? The 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 guy who's in charge for making the, uh, making the chip that creates. I haven't seen it in so long. Oh, man. Oh, it's great. Linda Hamilton tries to, <laughs> tries to use a, a water gun to blast him. You know, yeah. we're not on TikTok. I don't know why I'm censoring myself like this. She tries to shoot him because <laughs> he's the one ultimately yeah, responsible for creating. He gets unalived. Yeah, he gets unalived. God, the infantile. Speaking of TikTok, should we move on to politics? Sure. But I do want to like that's. All this stuff has changed very rapidly where like you used to bring up AI. And the first thing people would talk about is that, you know, like, oh, like Terminator or whatever. But yeah. Within this past year, with the launch of ChatGPT, it has become a completely different thing. And like the mainstreamness of it, the everyone is using it. It's and to the point where people are having problems. You know, uh, teachers and professors are like, I don't know how to teach anymore. And so and you and be GPT teach. No, <laughs> no, I know they don't know how to grade anymore without right. knowing whether or not this was Real. used by chat GPT. Um, it's becoming, you know, I know a lot of people younger than me. It's becoming kind of replacing search engines for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, just <clears throat> asking questions. I know a lot of creative people who are integrating into their work and, uh, yeah, it's been a fucking wild year I just and it's wish... a crazy, it's crazy that this is all capping that wild year. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of cap. You know, what's cap is the damn you call a customer service line, and I, I still got to say, even though they're implementing their smart, I can understand complete sentences. Why don't you tell me what you're calling about? Representative. Well, but that's... I, sorry, I didn't get that. The AI's whole directive, though, is do not get them to a representative. Yeah, I know, and I'm <laughs> tired of it, man. I'm just fucking sick of it. Get me that person in, at a call center in Indonesia. I just, I welcome their voice. Hello, Mr. God. Can I help you? How can there I help you? There is something so nice about finally just getting a person and being like, oh, thank God. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's so easy. We could just do that right now. You're like, I, that's so great. Thank you. I love when they give you their whole, like, thank you so much for being a Chase card member today, and I'd be happy to help you today. And if you stay on the line, you'll be able to take a survey. Uh, actually, I take the I'm survey. I'm so busy. No. I take the survey. If they've done a good job, I take a survey because I know they get a little pat on the head. And I want them to get that pat on the head. I, 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 I had a call. I had to call American Express for some shit, and they sent me a survey on the on the computer. This guy, he was just some like white guy in his sixties who was a football nerd, and he goes, "Oh man, so nice to talk to you on a Friday." Da 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 da. You know, I'm excited to watch my favorite football team later today. Before even getting into anything, he's just talking my ear off about football. See, and then no, we get I don't to like it. this anymore. He solved it. He gave me some extra like American Express points for my troubles. And then when I got the survey, oh man, I sung his praises. And then it gives you an option to like, oh, do you want George to see a message? And I said, hey George, man, I hope your football team kicks ass. It was nice. He was so nice. All right, fine. I like George. Yeah, George is good. Speaking of George, yeah, do we want to do George or? Well, I guess George George Santos is is pretty funny. We can just touch on that. Right, Basically, right. he's he's in trouble because he George he, Santos is incorrigible. He, <laughs> he's he been in trouble funny. since he got elected. Yeah, and he's uh, such a bitch. But <laughs> they, 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 we'll just do this really quickly. He they released you know the ethics report, and he's just such a funny. I love this part from the report. At nearly every opportunity, he placed his desire for private gain above his duty to uphold the Constitution, federal law, and ethical principles. He sought to fraudulently exploit every aspect of his House candidacy for his own personal profit. Look at him. 
And I some mean, of the stuff oh. they they've they've put out that he was spending his money on is just very fun. What? Like what? <clears throat> Santos made a fifteen hundred dollar campaign debit card purchase that was noted as Botox in, ex- <laughs> yeah. in expense spreadsheets and two other purchases that totaled over a thousand dollars at aesthetic spas. I okay, could legitimize that. Go You're absolutely a off. You gotta yeah. Look good. Santos was known for talking to people, including to the wives of prominent donors, about Botox, plastic surgery, <laughs> shoes, and designer fashion on the campaign trail. Look, you gotta you gotta this go is... out there and schmooze. Yeah. Yeah, what's wrong with that? The committee also found that he used more than $2,000 in campaign funds on trips to Atlantic City and more than $3,000 on an Airbnb over a weekend. His campaign calendar indicated he was vacationing in the Hamptons. So what? Good you got, He's got to have yeah, a little R&R. Got, yeah, I mean, come on. Trail. If you're going to hit the campaign trail that What hard. else did he spend money? I love this guy. Uh, a former staffer told investigators that Santos once brought him to a Botox appointment when they were... <laughs> He loves his Dude, my guy's just fucking Botox to the He's gills. Chatting to the wives. Brought about. him to a Botox point when there was a campaign event nearby, and another said they did not recall any campaign business in Atlantic City. The questionable spending did not stop there. It also included designer fashion and paying his rent, according to the report. A twenty thousand dollar transfer to Santos's business, Devolder Organization, requested by his treasurer's staff, was made at a time when that account had a negative balance. Didn't he also spend money on OnlyFans? Yes. Uh, Money from this deposit was subsequently used a week later to purchase about $6,000 of luxury goods at Ferragamo stores, pay his rent, and spend $800 at a casino. You know what he should do? He should resign and say that the whole thing was a bit meant to showcase the corruption of, of politics. That's good. And how easy it is. That's, That's what good. I would do. If I were his PR person, My here's entire... how we're going to twist this, man. We're... I'm holding a mirror to you all. <laughs> yeah. He's like, uh, you know, I mean, also, this is at least more fun. Every every year we get a report on on, on how crazy every every senator did in the stock market. This oh, guy's yeah. just like, I don't know. Look how sick it is. My face does not move. <laughs> I got Botox, bitch. Wait, but OnlyFans. How much did he spend on OnlyFans? I don't have his OnlyFans. Hold on. Well, according according to uh, when he was questioned about the OnlyFans, he like was like, Oh, I'm just finding out about OnlyFans. I don't know anything about OnlyFans. Interesting. Oh, yeah, there's a clip that. out there of him saying that. I love him denying it. Another total bitch. Yeah. And I mean bitch in like a sassy way. Like like <laughs> how like how we used the word diva in the early 2000s. Diva total was diva. just another word for bitch. Speaking of bitch. Careful. Well, I don't mean that. <laughs> yeah, you better not mean that. I mean cuz cuz they were bitching at each other. Xi Jinping Thinking, talk about unaliving. We we salute the the powerful. What do you like to say? Oh, uh, the CCP is strong. Yes, we, we uh, they have our full backing. Yes, <laughs> full backing. <laughs> so Xi Jinping came to uh, the United States last week. He came to San Francisco, and famously, they cleaned it up for him. And a lot of people were pissed off about that because they're like, "What? You can't clean up the streets." For a decade, a decade until uh, Xi Jinping comes to town. Dude, I get that though. Come on, how many times are you, you living in filth in your own house and then you're having company over and you're like, "Good God, I've this place is a wreck." That's a good point, my man. I need to get these junkies out of my house. I need to get these junkies out of my house. Oh, there's shit all over the carpet. <laughs> so they they came to some agreements. Um, they're very very loose. Basically, shit's tense between us and China. We've got China encroaching increasingly on the sovereignty of Taiwan and basically telling the U.S. to fuck off and mind your own business. And then the And then a little weird Cold War we're doing with the, you know, a little chip war we got going on. Yeah, yeah. So Xi Jinping, uh, in in the spirit of friendship, announced that he's going to give us some pandas, which is pretty cool. He said that they are envoys of friendship. Hell yes. Between the Chinese and American people. Give us those goofy little bears. He said, we are ready to continue our cooperation with the U.S. on panda conservation and do our best to meet the wishes of the Californians so as to deepen the friendly ties between our two peoples. That ought to fix it. They agreed to, China agreed to go after chemical, this is huge. They agreed to go after the chemical companies that uh, are in China to stem the flow of fentanyl and the source material that's used to make it. And in return... Biden will lift restrictions on China's Forensic Police Institute, an entity that the U.S. alleges is responsible for human rights abuses. Dude, Xi Jinping went to San Francisco once and was like, okay, we'll do something about the fence. Yeah, so, this I is mean, pretty this bad, is, man. I did not We see did it. not. Holy shit. We did not know it yeah. was like this. So China says that the deal is going to be void 
if Biden criticizes Xi and the Communist Party. They said, quote, if the Biden administration isn't pro-China in 2024, enforcement of a fentanyl deal will fade away. Which is so fucked up. Yeah, just like you better you better be explicitly <laughs> pro-China next year or else. If I sense any anti-China sentiment, we are going to flood the streets. Oh, yeah. Well, we're, they, they send it to Mexico and then the cartels use the chemicals yeah. to make the fentanyl. But so in addition, uh, Xi Jinping urged Joe Biden to clearly demonstrate that the U.S. doesn't support Taiwan independence and to support China's peaceful reunification with Taiwan. So uh, they're basically saying in, in no uncertain terms, fuck off, mind your own business. This is our shit. Here's a couple pandas. Yeah. And Biden responded by saying that the longstanding U.S. position is a determination to maintain peace and stability. It's just so many political posturings and sayings like you're saying that you agree to do that. But OK, hey, we're just we just want peace and stability. Also, also, I will say, fucking uh, not being pro-China enough in 2024 is extremely broad. It's like uh, Xi could be like, well, I don't know. That's not pro-China. That didn't feel very pro-China of <clears throat> Biden. Yeah. He also, uh, Xi Jinping pushed back at the White House's view that relations with China are defined by competition, saying that he rejects the idea of a major country competition. I really like that. I like that he said that. He said China has no plans to surpass or replace the United States. Uh, he also said the United States should not have any plans to suppress and contain China. He's basically saying, hey, and he, he was quoted as saying the world is big enough for both China and the United States to prosper. Let's not do Which another I, Cold War. It's a war. peaceful talk, man. I like that. He's being peaceful. And so I wanted to play this, um, this TikTok of him. So this is uh, Xi Jinping addressing, um, addressing everybody. We, the largest developing country, that is China, and the largest developed country, the United States, we must get along with each other. It's a nice sentiment. Yeah, I mean, he goes on. Uh, is this is taking it? a lot. Like, yeah. Should I speed it up? I mean, dude, the, yeah, truly, speed it up, G. Good. That's good, too. God, I wish I could speak Mandarin. It'd be so cool. Would it? Just belt out. Bing chilling. You know? Careful. Uh, that's uh, that's I'm um, <laughs> quoting um the wrestler guy. Sure, sure, sure. John Cena, John Cena. Yeah, you you almost got it. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, that was you thought that yeah, was that, me I doing mean, a John Cena? No, I thought that was you doing a little bit of Mandarin. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that's a that's a Chinese. It's a very word. popular American uh, of English. Of course, word. I know that, but I'm I'm trying to rope you in. <laughs> okay. But I, I for one, believe him, and I think that China's been getting a bad rap. Listen, China's done some questionable things, but like you said, we fully back. <laughs> say, I uh, say the word. The CCP is strong. We, yes, we they have our they have the full pay pigs backing. <clears throat> Every, I'm I'm very open about the fact that I would like to become one of those creators who gets uh, paid to move to China and um, just post. TikToks so how great it is being a uh, American in China. I've so, got a friend in China, and I might visit him in reach out um, January. I have no scruples, and <laughs> that same friend who's in China is telling me that Chinese built electric vehicles are head and shoulders above Tesla and everything else that we've got here. I mean, you see the way they've built trains in the past couple decades my brother they took a billion people out of poverty also if it was china here dealing with the 10 freeway shut down thing would have been fixed and a high-speed rail put in its place by now yeah you know how many chinese people would have died making it let's about a hundred thousand let's not get into yeah <laughs> let's not get into numbers hey. well folks we hope you've enjoyed this episode we hope you have a happy 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 thanksgiving we hope nobody chokes at your household nobody chokes on no turkey oh bones. did we say go if we didn't say it already, go watch our latest Ben and Emil on oh, yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Find some... out what we're thankful for. Yeah, find out what we're thankful for. Find, find out... out about dark uncle energy. Find out about dark uncle energy. Yeah. Find out about what what 
we feel about Thanksgiving. Yeah. And if you haven't, go sign up. Patreon.com slash PayPigsPod. Check out them tiers, baby, because we got a lot more than just bonus episodes. Oh, yeah. Next week we're doing that Colin episode, which is very yeah. fun. Yeah. All right, folks. So long. So long. <laughs>